At this the, conference will now be recorded. I don't have the, uh, well, I have it on the minutes. Yeah, you could read it from the minutes, Pat. Okay, we will open this meeting of the January 7th, it might be Joe coming in here, January 7th, uh, meeting and it is Joe so uh, as do you want me to read it you want me to continue is he trying to get on Joe are you there yeah I'm here. all right I was just gonna start reading go ahead okay uh, the time being 4 46 p.m. on January 7th 2021 I'd like to call the first meeting of the new year to order before we get started, your microphone during the meeting unless you want to speak. Otherwise, the background noises will interfere with the meeting. As chair of the Tilton Select Board, due to the COVID-19 slash coronavirus crisis, and in accordance with Governor Sununu's emergency order number 12, pursuant to executive order 2020-04, this board is authorized to meet electronically and these reasons shall be reflected in the minutes. Please note that there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to the meeting, which was authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. However, in accordance with the emergency order, this is to confirm that A, we are providing public access to the meeting by telephone. Members of the public wishing to attend this meeting electronically may call the following conference call number at 1-866-899-4679. The access code is 817-026-717, followed by the pound key. B. Additional public access by video or other electronic means will be ava made available as follows. We are using the GoToMeeting platform for this electronic meeting. All members of the board have the ability to communicate contemporaneously during this meeting through this platform. And the public has access to contemporaneously listen and if necessary, participate remotely using your smartphone tablet or computer at global.gotomeet.me forward slash town of Tilton on the selectman. This information can also be found at our website at tiltonnh.org under meeting schedule and agendas. Uh, go to the board of selectmen. C. We are providing public access, public notice of the necessary information for accessing the meeting. We previously gave notice to the public of how to access the meeting via telephone, conference, and by go to meeting. And instructions are provided on the Tilton Town website at tiltonnh.org and at the town kiosk. D, we are providing a mechanism for the public to alert the public body during the meeting that a member of the public wishes to speak or be recognized during any public comment or public hearing. If you're a member of the public listening in and have questions, please write your questions down. And at the end of each agenda item, I will ask if there are any questions from the public before we move on to the next agenda item. Please state your name and address and then ask your question. E, we are providing a mechanism for the public to alert the public body during the meeting if there are problems with access. If anybody has a problem, please email web at tiltonnh.org, which will be monitored during the meeting. F, we will adjourn the meeting if the public is unable to access the meeting. Even in the event in the event the public is unable to access the meeting, we will adjourn the meeting and have it rescheduled at another time, to another time. 
Please note that all votes that are taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call. So let's start the meeting by taking a roll call attendance. When each member states their presence, also please state whether there's anyone in the room with you during this meeting, which is required under the right to know law. Given the unusual circumstances, we will dispense with the Pledge of Allegiance. Constantino. Constantino here, and there's one other, currently one other in the house and one to come in shortly. Fog present, one dog lying down. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jessamine is present, and I am currently alone. Pyra. Pyra present, one in the house, another one in the house. Two cats and a dog. Okay. Scanlon. Scanlon present, alone. Okay. Um, first off. Uh, yeah, um, I want to uh, bring the mo bring minutes of twelve twenty nine to the floor for discussion. Are there any corrections, additions, or comments? I have none. I think she did an excellent job with such confusion on the budget last week. That was great. Um, agreed. If there's no other comments, uh, I make a motion to accept the minutes of December 29th as presented. Is there a second? Constantino, second. We have a motion and a second on the floor. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none. Yeah, sorry, can you hear me? Did you fall? Uh, you hearing none. I'm, I'm here, but my camera keeps cutting out. Uh, all, oh, those yeah. in favor, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Constantino. Aye. Well, I guess still yes. Okay, uh, Pyra. Pyra, yes. Scanlon. Scanlon. Yes. Jessamine, yes, and the vote passes. Um, I would like at this time to open a public hearing into accepting a $25,000 donation from the Godette family uh, at AutoServe of Tilton. Um, is there any public that wishes to speak? Anybody on the line, John? Uh, Tim? Uh, there's there's one uh, one person, I believe, besides the board and admin. Uh, how about would that be the chief? Uh, no, no. Um, okay. So, uh, member of the public, would you like to make a comment at this time? Well, if you change your mind, please sing out. Uh, while we wait for a public comment, uh, we're having this public hearing to accept the generous donation of $25,000 from Paul Gaudet and the Gaudet family at Auto Serve of Tilton for the new police department at 45 Sanborn Road. Um, would anybody from the board care to comment? Uh, we're very thankful for the Gaudet family. Um, it's They've had a long history in the town of Tilton for their community involvement and their generosity towards the community. Um, we understand that they've now sold uh, AutoServe and we're kind of sad about that. But their, uh, their community involvement has been outstanding and this is just one more, one more thing that they've uh, continued to support and has always supported the police department. So thank you to Paul Gaudet and the AutoServe family. Peter? Uh, 
I'd just like to thank the Godet family for their generosity, short and sweet. Indeed. How about you, Eric? Uh, thank you to the Godets for their generosity. Very nice of them. And uh, their legacy will live on. John? Uh, ditto, Jeff. I'm very grateful for their contributions. Um, thank all of you, and I'd like to thank uh, Paul Gaudet and the Gaudet family for all they've done over the years for the town of Tilton. Um, I'm sure it's much appreciated. Okay. Joe, do we know where this, this donation time. is? Joe, do we know where this donation is earmarked at the PD? Chief? Yeah, they uh, sponsored the lobby, Pat. Just, just wanted the public to know that. Okay. Um, if there's no other comments from the public, and the selectmen, Tim or Jeannie, do you have comments? No, I, I would just um, second what every one of the select board members uh, said that, you know, uh, Dennis stepped up right away uh, to support what we were doing for Tilton um, with this new police station. And they lived up true to their word to make that $25,000 contribution. And I think it's very generous and uh, it helps us. Uh, helps us get what we need for the community. So thank you. Yeah, I'd like to echo what uh, what you all have said as well and thanking them. And uh, they've been an incredible partner over the years. Um, you know, very concerned about the growth uh, in Tilton and seeing that things were done right and, and uh, involved at different times with the PD uh, when, when we were looking at uh, issues of training They've helped out with uh, vehicles uh, for the police department from time to time. They've uh, really helped us when we've been in a bind on some parts in prior years, uh, the whole gambit. And all the while, um, you know, really looking just to be that kind of partner in town that uh, we're all in this together. And, uh, and, uh, and, and they made such uh, an impact uh, at the public hearing when, uh, when this, donation was announced and I think it helped um, helped bring in other donations as well um, certainly uh, one of which I'm, I'm absolutely positive about so, uh, so it had a ripple effect as well so uh, I'd just like to say thank you as well excellent uh, well if there's no other comment from the public uh, I would like to make a motion to accept the $25,000 check from Paul Gaudet and the Gaudet family of an auto serve of Tilton. Is there a second? Constantino second. Um, I suppose I should uh, uh, expand uh, on that motion a little bit uh, because specifically, specifically, it's for the new police department at 45 Sanborn Road. That's my intent. I still second. We have a motion and a second on the floor. Is there any comment? Hearing none, roll call vote. All those in favor, please say aye. Constantino? Yes. Hog, uh, yes. Ira? Ira, yes. Scanlon, yes. Jessamine, yes. The motion carries. Um, and at this point, I would like to close the public hearing. Next up on our agenda is Kevin Duval, Department of Public Works, for a trash collection proposal. Uh, Kevin, are you there? I am here. Hello. Uh -huh. Okay, the uh, floor is yours. Okay, so this year we're, we're our solid waste collection contract will be 
um, coming to a close. And Tim, are you doing something to my screen? <laughs> of course, so, I am. Um, we're <laughs> we're um, putting together some numbers <laughs> because we've got to make some decisions here over the next year, and. Um, one of those possibilities was to purchase our own trash truck and handle it in-house. And, uh, you know, that kind of purchase and that kind of decision needs to be put to the town to vote and needs to start with a warrant article. So what we did this past week and uh, last week was we, we put together some information. And when I say we, it's it was myself and Tim and Jeannie collaborating to, to get some information on on paper so that uh, you could um, see what the, the, the costs were involved with buying a new truck and also comparatively between um, what that what, what the cost of us doing it in-house and outsourcing it and we used um, our numbers from last year with Pinard um, so that, that that's kind of where we're at and in um, so the, the numbers that I put together were pretty strict numbers. Tim Tim had, had projected you know uh, a little bit more for next year because we don't know what the costs are going to be next year. Um, so that's where you're going to see a difference between Tim's document and my document. Mine is more accurate as today's numbers, like the fuel cost. Um, the fuel cost I put uh, is 220 per gallon, which is the average around this area right now. And, and um, Tim had put his numbers at 350 a gallon. Uh, so those are going to be the differences that you see now in this in these documents. Um, but they're all pretty accurate. And, and the cost of the truck is obviously the, the largest expense. And I gave three examples. Now those are are like I said, the, the numbers that I got this week. Um, if the time comes that we do make that purchase, so those are going to change, but it'll at least give us an idea of what we're looking at for cost. Um, Tim had broke it down a little bit more in, in uh, um, as far as what it would cost us each year because of the financing of the truck. Um, so I, I guess I just wanted to, tonight's meeting to introduce all of this information. And obviously, I can't. We we can't expect a decision overnight or or in this meeting. So I don't know. I wanted you to have the information and, and and come up with some questions and actually have a starting point. And I thought this was a good starting. Point. Did did everybody get my documents or get the packet? I should have started um, with that. <laughs> I didn't didn't see it. Uh, so, didn't see it. Uh, and I I think that may be my error. Um, I was waiting on, I was thinking that we were going to get something this afternoon uh, before we put it out. So uh, I'll be sure to put drop these in the board packet folder. Um, if I may just um, take you, uh, would it be all right, Kevin, if I took them through this uh, comparison? Yes, Tepinar? absolutely. Yep. All right. So the plan, Kevin's plan, um, is much like what you looked at. I don't know if you remember back in 2016. But um, you know, there was some there was some rationale back then as to doing it ourselves, except we didn't have the structure, the um, the uh, departmental structure in order to be able to support it. So uh, what you're looking at here is uh, a breakdown of the equipment and operating costs. So you have personnel uh, with whom uh, the director has already identified who would be the operator. And this is total cost, including uh, retirement, taxes, uh, health insurance. There is uh, allowances for backup for uh, vacations, sickness, and otherwise. And those are loaded costs uh, made up of other of the crew. And then um, he's also allocated some time for part-time uh, plow driver in the winter time in case there is uh, any additional sickness because there'll be more um, more demands upon the crew during possibly during the winter. Uh, in the equipment, uh, what you see here is a, a purchase of uh, a $250,000 vehicle. We have a, uh, 
We've been given a planning number uh, from our bank of 1.45% uh, over six years. And those would be annual payments. Uh, in addition, uh, there, if we had to rent a garbage truck, it would be $8,700 per month. They do it on a monthly basis. The alternative would be to um, to eventually buy or or package together something where we'd get a, a used a second truck, a used truck of some kind. But uh, here's an example of uh, one month uh, for a truck. In addition, uh, Kevin has outlined in his packet very detailed um, information on the truck maintenance, and he goes through the brakes, shoes, drums. Uh, all the other items that would need to be taken care of during the year and totals that up. So I've brought that figure over of 8341. In addition, we purchase every year uh, or almost every year uh, new totes and then also lids. And these are replacements for ones that are typically damaged or people move away uh, and that sort of thing. So there's some money for that. In addition, uh, as Kevin said, we use pretty much the same uh, mileage estimate. However, uh, you know, I'm not as optimistic about inflation, so I'd prefer to err on the higher side and just say, you know, if we come, if our average cost per gallon is a lot less, and, and he's absolutely right in terms of where the uh, prices are right now and what we're paying, but um, I prefer just to be a little conservative in that, in that we could be looking at higher costs down the road. The truck washing is from uh, his um, his report again, and this is uh, 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 dealing with, um, you know, making sure things are, are clean and pumped out once a month. The, um, in addition to that, uh, we have the additional insurance from Primex. So there's Roughly $175,000 of equipment and operating costs on an annual basis. And in addition, uh, right now we uh, are we are capped for our recycling with Pinard at $50 per ton. So obviously, if we're doing this ourselves, we're going to have to pay a full boat price. Uh, I, we don't have an exact figure per ton uh, through NRA, and we'll update that when we get that. But this number here, this 37,620, is based upon the uh, the recycling tonnage for 2020 that was disposed of by Bernard. In addition, we put another 5% in for uh, contingency cost overrun, and. Uh, so we're looking at, from an apples to apples perspective, 220, just under $223,000 for us to be able to provide uh, trash and recycling collection in the town of Tilton on their own. The Pinard 2020 contract, so what we've actually paid Pinard in 2020 has been $280,314. And uh, so the difference being 50, a little over $57,000. Uh, would be our projected saving. And keeping in mind that's also at the higher, uh, you know, higher price per gallon, and it's also factoring in a one-month rental of a truck that uh, may or may not be needed during that year. Uh, on the second tab that you'll see, this is um, this is our payment to Bernard uh, during the year. Uh, the collection for uh, solid waste is here. Collection for recycling is here. This is the disposal of recycling materials here. Uh, this is totes here. So we didn't buy that many totes this last year. Uh, it was just lids and chicken. And then this is the number of tons. And you can see that um, that the 300 and just under 342 tons at $50 a ton was $17,075. And when added to the um the uh uh let's see let me just verify that um so that is that is already in the uh i've got to hang on i had a little error in my calculation here so um uh so that would mean about a forty thousand dollar 
savings. My apologies for that. And better better to correct it now than later. So uh, so that's an apples to apples. That's our costs to Pinard's 2020 costs, keeping in mind that their collection contracts for both recycling and solid waste are increasing 2% in 2021. So both of these figures, <laughs> uh, 2%. Is that 2% calculated in this figure here, or is it in addition to? Uh, no, it's not. So this is, this is looking at Pinard's actual 2020 costs are $263,238. So That's it's greater than 40000 40, that's right. It would be greater than forty thousand. So that's when does the contract run out? The end of uh, twenty twenty one. Like December thirty first. That's correct. So we need a warrant article. We need to discuss this at this town meeting. Yes. Yes. That's right. And when Jeannie and Kevin and I were discussing this, uh, Jeannie rightly pointed out that there really are uh, three options. One is to continue on with Bernard and do a renewal. And we, we wouldn't necessarily have to do a five-year. We could do an extension, which, if you recall, we had done many times in the past with uh, Best Way and then with uh, Casella after them. Uh, the other option would be to do this in-house, uh, which is outlined here. Or uh, the third option, <coughs> pardon me, would be to um, to focus in on uh, developing the transfer station more and eliminating curbside pickup of trash and recycling and um, uh, allowing people to arrange for private pickup and or bring their trash and recycling to the recycling center. And the only reason why that's mentioned is that you know, as we look at uh, more difficult budget years perhaps to come, that's an area where there could be a significant savings in um, in this cost out of the town budget. Keeping in mind, however, that, you know, the commercial properties are paying uh, for a good portion of this. It works out to be about 39 cents on the tax rate uh, right now. And uh, the commercial properties are helping to pay for this, but they don't get the utility from it. Um, and, um, uh, uh, but it's still uh, a way to reduce the budget in a, a pretty large manner. So those would be the three options. I can tell you okay, now. Are there any questions for Tim? Pat? I, I'm not in favor of the third option of, of having people pick it up there's way too many seniors we have percentage wise we have a good portion of um well probably more than 40 percent of our population is seniors so we have to have them go out and find out their own pickup and availability and then drop it off at the to the uh transfer station so it would be option one or option two. And then if you look at a difference of 40,000 with a 2% increase in 2021, is it really worth your aggravation, Kevin, for $50,000 difference to have it in-house? Um, you, you know, I'm not afraid to tackle new things and, and um, you know, charge forward with this endeavor if that's what's decided. But I was expecting to see more of a of a savings when I first started this uh, process. So I was I was surprised by the numbers to see that it wasn't as large of a savings as I was expecting. How often do you have to replace these trucks? Um, I spoke to a a couple of I spoke to waste management and I spoke to Casella Waste. Um, they are on a three to four year rotation on their trucks um, just to keep the cost of maintenance down and repairs because in that commercial uh, environment, they're beating the hell out of their trucks. Ours wouldn't be as extreme, but the wear and tear is still there. So we would be looking at, at the end of the lease, if, it, if, if it's financed for six years, 
we'd be looking pretty close after the seventh or eighth year to replace this truck or kick it down to a spare vehicle and get another new one. There's a lot of hydraulic lines, a lot of hydraulic and in, in, uh, electrical or hydraulic solenoids. There's there's three times as much maintenance in, in um, things that can go wrong on these automated trucks than the old school rear load trash trucks where they ran one piston and two controls. Um, I, I do have some working experience with these trucks in, in uh, I got to tell you that keeping them clean and keeping them serviced is key to keeping them on the road. Um, so yeah, it's it's not like we're going to buy a truck and have it for 30 years. That's not going to happen. We'll have a truck and we might get eight or nine years out of it. If, if we have one driver and we keep the upkeep and the service um, strict. The strict service and upkeep and replacement of all of those parts, tires and brakes and what have you. Um, yeah. When you put that in with the against the fifty thousand dollars, what have we actually saved? Well, that's that's after the all the repairs are are um, included included in that fifty thousand dollars saving. Yeah, and I spoke to waste management to see what their what their life expectancy was on on uh, the brakes on those uh, trash trucks just to get some working knowledge and and um, I happen to have a, a friend that works as a mechanic with waste management out of New Hampton and he said that they'll do a, a set of brakes every three months or so three or four months depending on the driver because those trucks they're um, they're assigned specific drivers and everybody drives differently. So he, he says every three to four months they're putting in a set of brakes, and that's a complete set, which is brake linings and uh, brake drums, um, and that's what I had broken down in my in in my um, uh, proposal because I, I I wanted it to be as specific as possible, and um, we're looking at just for the brakes at around twenty eight hundred dollars a year. Uh, so it, that, it gets costly, but it's not, it's not extreme. I mean, it's not like a, break, a set of brakes every month. It's it's a little better than that. But, and and the, the mileage isn't extreme on the truck because it's only going to be in town, and, and the most mileage it's going to see is uh, back and forth the wheel braider. So they're not going to get a whole lot of mileage, which so will add life to the truck. There is another there is another way to save uh, some more money out of this, which would be uh, if if uh, we were to uh, not tip our recycling, uh, but uh, put it back into the uh, solid waste um, plant. So we would save the difference of the recycle the higher recycling tipping fees to the uh, wheel abrader tipping fees until such time either recycling was worth more money. Um, you know, or something like that. So uh, that'd be about thirteen thousand dollars a year additional savings if um, if it was just all considered solid waste as opposed to you know uh, the single stream and solid waste stream. Right now. But then, oh, never mind. I'll wait. Eric's got his hand raised. Eric, um, I'm just re the the you said the um. Rental of, of the vehicle, if we need a if we need a loaner vehicle, is based on 30 days. So if we have a vehicle that's down for just two days, we're paying for 30. Yeah. Or yes. So if, if it's down in January, let's just say something happens, it it loses a wheel and it, it's going to be down for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. So we pay for 30 days, and then in February it gets into an accident. I, you know, maybe they slide off the road into a telephone pole. Sorry to be gloom and doom. We have to pay another eight thousand dollars. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. There's only one company on the East Coast that rents trash trucks, and they're based out of Florida. They have a satellite office in Massachusetts, and there is a one-month minimum for rentals. In um, the salesperson, the per salesperson slash. Um, 
supervisor that I spoke to at this company, which it's in the packet that I had provided for you, um, stated that they have leasing programs and she actually tried to get me to commit to a leasing program um, for so much a month, but their rental program is $8,700 a month. And there's, it's a, there's free delivery and free pickup, so they'll bring the truck right to us, but there is a one month commitment. It's the only business in town. And How that much cost is the lease? The, the, the monthly the lease? lease? Yeah. That's not much different. That's eighty six hundred a month. Um, now again, that's that's a automated truck to pick up our trash barrels. It would be less if we got a a rear load truck and put a driver and a shaker on it. But that then we're taking the risk of having injuries and and um, having people out of work. So that price reflects. The automated truck to handle our trash cans. Who owns the black barrels? We do. Do we? Yes. Remember, we uh, purchased them from Casella years ago. The green barrels we did. The recycled barrels we did. How about I the believe- Pinard black barrels? Uh, I thought we had purchased those in the, right around the same time. I guess we'll have to check. Those are Pinard barrels. Or at least they came from Pinard. They didn't come for, cause, from Casella. Right. The black ones are from Pinard. We, we purchased, but I think we purchased them outright. Okay. Because I know they're 25 bucks a piece or so. 75 Ouch. No, no, there's 75. Where do you buy used garbage cans? I suppose they're out there, but they must be. Well, uh, so that's how we acquired uh, the Casella cans, because uh, the alternative was they were going to have to go through town and pick up all their cans and arrange for all that. And it was a lot easier for us to buy it for, I believe it was about, 27 cents on the dollar. But you got to like that. Are there any other questions for Kevin? Peter, how about you? John, somebody. Um, Tim, I did. Go ahead, Peter. I'm sorry, buddy. I can only see one at a time. Maybe you should go through an order or something, Joe, just to make it easy. Tim, did I hear you correctly that it's Cheaper to pay MSW over recycle tonnage tonnage. Yes. So According they, to that, is, that would be the first thing you ask, and then you decide do you keep two barrels, and go from there. My next question: Why a Peterbilt? Why a Peterbilt? Because that was less expensive than the Mac, and less problematic than an International. And we already have a Peterbilt. We already have accounts set up. With Peterbilt of New Hampshire, so like Freightliner um, and Sterling weren't options. Well, they they can be options, but I didn't want to overwhelm you with numbers in, in, at this particular point. If we if we decide to go forward, then I can reach out to those other companies and say, okay, look, this is what we're doing. What can you give me for your best price? Okay. I think that's all I have at this point. Okay. Thank okay. you, Joe. Pat? I think at this point it's it's really overwhelming the, all of the numbers to look at. If we don't have the packet in front of us, once we get the packet, maybe next week or the week after, we have to have this done by February 5th to have a warrant article. If we do it this year, it may even be best to have a year extension on Panad and then figure it out and have it next year on a warrant article. That would be my two cents. So the the uh, the two documents are now in your um, board packet for this meeting. Uh, they start PW uh, one's PW automated solid waste truck. That's uh, Kevin's narrative, and then the PW solid waste and recycling collection program costs. That's the spreadsheet. 
Uh, so, Mr. Chair, maybe we can discuss this. Uh, I don't know what's on the agenda next week, but perhaps maybe we could have some time next week or the week after. I'm thinking the week after, um, according to my understanding of the uh, agenda. However, um, the only one I haven't heard from is John. Do you have questions, John? Yeah, I guess, you know, a couple, if we were to put it on the uh, Warren article and uh, let's say it got approved and then um, the uh, Pinard comes back and they give us a really good deal, um, are we stuck with having to go and do it in-house or can we accept one, you know, the other? If it's on a warrant article and the warrant article passes, you have to go with the warrant article wish with the legislative body's wishes. Could the warrant article be worded in such a way mm -hmm. that it would allow for us to accept, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, another contract? Because perhaps Pinard might come down if they're not going to be doing the recycling, and, and that, um, and that was one of my thoughts. The other thing was. Um, as from um, Kevin, if had you had the opportunity to talk to any other municipalities on the pros and cons, and you know, on, on a um, municipal level, but yeah, I actually spoke with Franklin. I spoke with Franklin, and they're doing away with the trash trucks, and they're actually outsourcing it. Um, in uh, Laconia, it still has waste management managing their transfer station. But they, I believe, they have best way collecting the trash. Um, they, they really weren't a, a good municipality to talk to because they still run the um, drive, the driver and shaker truck teams. Um, those are the only, uh, the only other company I, I, I mean, municipality I reached out to was Pembroke and Hookset, and I didn't receive anything back from them. So. Um, it's still a work in progress. Yeah. Okay. And the, the other thing is I know some of them come with, um, you know, a lot of times when we have the barrels that just sort of uh, you pick up and you dump, you don't know what's in there. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the trucks would come equipped or do come equipped with uh, a camera so you see what's coming in and, it also gets the, the location. So if, you know, we wouldn't be on the hook for disposing of some uh, really bad stuff. Oh yeah. Back. Yeah. That's the, that's, that's the uncertainty of trash. I mean, uh, years ago, I, I actually did a short time with waste management about 15 years ago. I was the shaker on the back and I actually drove, drove the city trash truck in Laconia. Um, it, it gets, Colorful. It gets uh, interesting, <laughs> um, but that's where I, I found you know I learned a lot of knowledge working for them. Like the um, we're going to have to be uh, vaccinated for Hep A and Hep B um, for the possibility of, of coming in contact with human waste um, and other pathogens and things like that. So there there is a, a safety side to this whole thing. Um, mm -hmm. There's going to be a lockout tagout program for these trucks when we're cleaning them, um, and it's actually a firing offense if somebody doesn't follow, because people get dead if they don't follow. Um, so there, there's a lot of safety involved with this if we take it on. Um, the hazard waste from washing the truck. There's it's six thousand dollars a year to have um, clean harbors come in and pump our tank. Now, I, years ago, I had known of mobile companies coming in and doing trash cleaning, I mean, uh, trash truck cleaning um, on site for municipalities, but they were put us, they, they were discontinued because there, there wasn't 100% containment to all the uh, water and contamination. So they were actually outlawed. You cannot do that anymore. So we would have to have a collection in a tank that is pumped out on a regular basis so that we could ensure 100% containment. Now, we already have that here at the shop with our floor drain and our holding tank. That $6,000 was Clean Harbor's estimate 
to be pumping our tank once a month for a year. Um, so, you know, it, it's pretty involved as far as safety and, and containment of, of, of uh, hazard waste. Mm -hmm. uh, so a large, large would they hole. be washed inside or you'd have to? They are periodically washed inside the truck. Wow. That's why the lockout tag. I mean, program. inside the building. Inside the building. Yes, that's correct. Yes, they would be, they would be washed inside the building. So that we could utilize the floor drain in, in the catch system. <laughs> Would there be an opportunity to have a conversation, uh, Tim, to with Pen and Jeannie to, with Panad and see, let them know that you're looking at other options and perhaps maybe they you could see what their price uh, would be or before before or we all talk about it. Right, or have a conversation about you know, what they could su suggest for ways for us to reduce costs. Yeah, and, and if, if it turns out that we... All right. John's got Peter? his hand up. The, the other Peter? question... Yeah, uh, could, we ask, could we ask Pinard to what the cost would be to run two trash runs instead of the trash recycle? That way the households still have the same number of barrels one one week to the next um, and see what their price is. Is it just the 13,000 tonnage difference or is there any difference? Because as I recall, the recycled truck costs more than the trash truck, substantially. That's, that's true. The, the routes, uh, and it's the oddest thing, but the routes were always more expensive for recycling. Uh, and uh, but I can tell you that I have talked to uh, Bernard in the past about uh, running those routes, just as you mentioned. Uh, he indicated there was a higher cost than than simply, um, uh, you know, our cost plus a small amount additional. He he seemed to indicate there was a much higher cost for them to do that. Uh, but we can certainly investigate that and um, you know, and, and start a discussion of what a you know, what an extension would look like or something like that. Part of the higher cost of recycle may be if you're doing a lot of plastics, you have no tonnage. So you've got to do a lot of trips with low tonnage, which brings your cost up. Right. So the the uh, the other thing is that uh, when it was mentioned earlier, I just took a, a quick look at the contract and I, I've got an email that has uh, all these documents for you, including our purchase of the sales tax. Uh, but the uh, in the contract, I just didn't see it mentioned. However, if we were to do it in house, and uh, and Pinard did own the black totes, then uh, if you were to eliminate the recycling collection until such time, uh, we're, you know, it was financially uh, viable, and we we're getting paid for uh, recycling disposal. Um, the uh, the you know the existing. Uh, totes that we own could be used for trash and done on a weekly basis. John? Yeah, no, I guess some of the recycling has more value than others. Could, is this something that we could perhaps like cardboard have it collected at, um, at the building there, uh, Kevin, you know, or maybe whatever it is that has value to it. Um, to collect, to uh, can keep us green, but not. Uh, That's definitely a possibility. I would. Um, we would have to look in the more dumpster space, or maybe potentially getting a, a baler at some point, so that we could bail it and store it. You know, I, I see just uh, you know the the trends of people to have uh, a lot of stuff shipped to them that corrugated cardboard might have uh, good value and uh, you know a box truck or something like that and get loaded in or, or something but be ashamed to just um, you know completely do without I do have a call I do have a call in the NRRA uh, was the, the um, company that we do a lot of business with with our transfer station we do all of it with NRA I do have a call into them to get some specific numbers on what the recycling market is today and, and projected for this year. 
unfortunately, they just didn't get back in touch with me um, soon enough to get it in this proposal. But mm -hmm. go ahead, Tim. Yeah, uh, for the board, uh, you know, if we're gonna, if we're, if there's some desire to talk to Cassandra, to Pinard about an extension, is there any reason why we wouldn't sort of explore uh, just to just to see Casella or waste management or others? I know there was a um, an issue in the past. Uh, is that is that still the same thinking from uh, 2016? Um, I think if we're only going to extend for a short period, we'll probably do best with Pinard. I, I, maybe think, I agree with Joe. I think if we're only going to go for like a year extension and then look at what our values are, then I think we're, we would benefit from extending it with Pinard and not going back to Casella. Casella would give us a higher price for that one year instead of a three year. Anybody else? You can always ask yeah. them if they are into a one year and if they say yes, get a price. If they say no, we're good to go. No harm, no foul. It's always nice to have a uh, Coke in the wings if you're negotiating with Pepsi. So. That's true. Uh, How about you, Eric? You got something? I just, if Kevin needs another municipality, I believe, I just started working up there, but I believe Waterville Valley has their own truck. Okay. I can reach out to them and see what they. I saw it the other okay. day. It looked awfully clean, so. <laughs> That's great. Uh, uh, okay. Well, I don't know how quick we can get these figures together, but I'm thinking two weeks from today, we should uh, have a serious discussion about where we're going. Okay? Okay. Well, thank you all very much. Is there anything else for uh, Kevin? How about that report on the cars, Kevin? How about that report? Did you all get it? Yes. Uh huh. I, okay. We did. Uh, Very enlightening. I, I got it. Okay. Um, and that's why I'm asking. We have a six o'clock something to do at six, but uh, I would certainly like to discuss those cars, I think. Okay. There's a, look at your agenda, Joe. There's also something underneath the agenda for DPW. At the bottom. Right underneath his name, under trash collection. Okay, then let's just go to that. I didn't see it. I still don't see it. So that's it. Warrant so, article. Yeah, so that had to do with um, when we last met. Kevin had asked for I think thirty-five thousand for the warrant article for roads, bridges, um, and sidewalks. Um, we actually recommended 50,000 and the board um, recommended 90,000 uh, thinking, I, I think the thinking was they'd rather go down than have to try to go up a town meeting if, if you know, you needed more funds. <clears throat> and I did talk with Kevin about that. Uh, the fun, you know, he says he's definitely um, open to the 90 and appreciates that from the board. Uh, he was just trying to be conservative. <clears throat> uh, and that money would be for Academy Street, um, which would go, Kevin, jump in anytime I'm thinking wrong. Okay. Go, ahead and go ahead and tell him what you're. My, my plan for Academy Street was to start it this year, and it would take, it would go over the course of two years, just because of the, the size of the project. Um, I thought that it would be good to stretch it over two years, two budget seasons, and give us some time to really do a nice job over there. There's a, there's a lot of work that needs to happen and a lot of communication between ourselves and, and the, the water department and a lot of logistics involved. And I thought that it would be um, too much to try to squeeze into one year, especially where we're still dealing with some COVID aftermath. In, um, there's a lot of influence. I mean, there's a lot of um, 
construction entities that are affected by the COVID, whether it be materials being available or construction outfits being able to come in and do some work. So I definitely wanted to start that project this year. And the other project that I wanted to do this year was the south side of Main Street and the T-Hop parking lot, which is parking lot G. I wanted to get parking lot G resurfaced and the new sidewalk along the new fence that was put up where the previous accident was. And also, we're going to try to widen the sidewalk along the south side of Main Street so that it mirrors the north side to try to beautify downtown a little bit more and make it easier for people to walk. Because there are some places on south on that south side sidewalk that is very narrow where the trash cans are actually on the side in, in the parking space. So, like Jeannie said, I'm very appreciative of the 90000 but I was very confident that I could get those projects that we started and uh, the Academy Street project started and my uh, sidewalk and T-Hop parking lot project completed with the 35. Um, now, we're, we're talking about widening the, the, uh, the sidewalk, which means we're going to have to have a conversation with DOT and get the curbing moved. So that's going to be some added expenses that uh, the 90000 would actually help with. Um, so, yes, I, I would like to shoot for the 90000 but if, if I absolutely have to, I can get it done with the thirty five and, and be in good shape. Not you know, We wouldn't be leaving the town in a big disarray going into next year. And the electrical conduit, possibly. The electrical conduit, exactly, so that we get the, um, at least the electrical in the ground, so that if we do some upgrades in the future, it's already there, just like we did on the north side. Any comments? Peter. Peter? Yeah, our 10-year uh, plan's updated. Um, it would be beneficial, I think, to sewer and water so that we can better budget our um, budgets uh, down the road so we don't get hit. Oh, we've got to do work on this. Mm -hmm. I'll take a look at it um, okay. tomorrow, but I'm pretty sure that I updated the 10 year plan. Okay. I, I just want to be sure. I was going to look at it shortly, Kevin, and I didn't want to yeah. look at it and find you were in the process. Next, oh, okay. question. Next question What are you anticipating year one on Academy Street? Year one on Academy Street would be at least the. Um, concrete retaining wall um, and the water drainage the second year would be now this is all uh, contingent on our conversations with the water department because there are some boundaries um, that were uh, outlined last year with um, a uh, surveying team so we need to be in contact with the water department but my my goal for this year would be to get the concrete retaining wall built and the drainage installed and the road paved. The second year part would be to have a company come in and do a stone overlay to make it look nice and to have a uh, guardrail installed um, because of the height of the, the wall. Actually, the guardrail would have to be done as soon as possible because it, the height of it would be around six feet we would need a guardrail so the the second year phase would be the to, to beautify the area meaning the stone overlay to make it look like a nice stone wall but it would have the integrity to the to hold back the roadbed and the drainage to hold to divert the groundwater that has been brought to my attention okay is the water district doing any work on the street as far as I know, no. Okay, so um, sewer, but sewer I haven't talked to the water. To, what's that? Sewer is planning on it, so we're going to have to coordinate. Sure. I um, I did see the sewer marks in the road, so I, I did know that the sewer was making some some doing some work up there. And as soon as we have a conversation with the water department and we can go forward, everybody will be notified. And and um, obviously, I'll have a conversation with you. The select board uh, presenting a plan on that as well. So if I hear you correctly, basically we're going to do all the work up until the 
wearing costs, and then beautification. Okay, yes, that's good. Um, regarding widening the sidewalk on Main Street, I believe the parking spaces are owned by the town. Mm -hmm. The roadway is owned by DOT. The problem is if you cut into our parking space, we have a narrower space. I yeah. doubt DOT is going to give up any land. You look at how they stripe it. They have purposely done it to affect the diagonal parking on one, on the north side. I got so you. I would, yeah, I wouldn't expect much help from them. That okay. was yeah. all I Thank you, Kevin. Yeah. Yeah. We, actually, we actually reached out to the DOT, Alan Hanscom, and we're going to be having a meeting with them to discuss it. They were definitely, at least the initial reaction, they're definitely open to uh, what we're trying to do. Jeannie, could you do me a favor? Yep. When you talk to them, can you ask them to explain the double yellow line? and why it's crowded on one side when it could have easily been moved a foot or two to make a better access as you come around that corner. What, what corner is that? Coming by at the uh, Polly's and all of those, right past okay. Town Hall. Okay. They don't like our diagonal parking, so they put the double yellow to try to, you know, it's push and shove from each entity. Okay. Thank you. I love the idea of widening the uh, walkway on the south part of the main street. That is, right now, it's a hazard. I, I, it's a trip hazard going up there. I never walk on that side for that reason. So I'm um, kudos to you for fixing that. Joe, you're muted. Joe, you're muted. Okay, thanks. <coughs> uh, Tim, how much is in the uh, Warren article right now, or Jeannie? 90. And so I we think, leave 90? Um, there's 90 yes. in the Warren article, and Tim, I think what's what's the balance in the that uh, reserve right now? He's not there. I think it's. Uh, I think with the 90, it makes, uh, I want to say, Tim, what's, what's, in the, what's in the capital reserve for roads, bridges, and sidewalks right now? I thought you'd never ask. It's $144,389.83. There you go. Highlight it on your screen. Okay, is there anybody who wants to change it from 90? Well, there you go. What else? Yeah, 15 minutes before the non-public if you want to talk to Kevin about the cars. Yeah, tell me about the tires, Kevin. Tell you about the tires? Oh, the, cars. Cars. the cars, the cars. <laughs> Um, yeah, I just wanted to give an accurate assessment as, as far as the condition of the vehicles, the ability to be able to fix these vehicles now that they're getting older, especially the Crown Vicks. Um, and we're going to have to cycle them out because we just can't repair them anymore. Even though they're, they're running vehicles, you know, there's, I'm coming into emission issues where I, I can't, like the, the, uh, 10A. Who, which is a great um, detail car, I can't get a sticker on it because it's failing emissions because it needs a new ECM. Well, the ECMs are discontinued from the dealership, so now I have to outsource it to an outside agency, and I'm having trouble getting one reflashed and sent to me. It's been two months now. So those are the struggles I'm finding with the Crown Vicks. If it's nuts and bolts i can do it no problem um but it, you get into the electronics and they just have your hands tied you if you can't get the parts to fix them they don't pass emissions they don't take a sticker there's and there's no getting around that um 
not necessarily that they're safe vehicles. They just don't pass emissions and they don't take a sticker. The um, and I, I had put a mileage on the other vehicles uh, at around I think it was one hundred and ten thousand or one hundred and fifteen thousand for these vehicles to be rotated out of the front line um, because of the extreme duty that they could possibly encounter, whether they're responding code or or um, just the, the abuse that they're put in, just from the nature of the, of what they have to go through to, to respond to calls. Um, there is wear and tear, there's integrity issues when these vehicles start to get older. And we're, we're, start, we're gonna start to see more and more failures in wheel bearings, in uh, suspension issues, things like that. And we don't need a car responding to a call breaking down because yeah, it might be old and it might have some mileage on it, but it's just, it's going to, it might fail. And we can't, I don't think that we should take that chance on having a car fail responding to a call. So that 115,000 miles, I think is a conservative number. Could we get a, a little bit higher? Absolutely. But we would just have to pay more attention to replacing parts with OEM correct parts instead of maybe Snell's or Napa aftermarket parts, which ties into the the money that would be available available for these um, part purchases. Um, and I just wanted to take each vehicle and, and, and give you an accurate mileage and assessment of its condition and maybe its continued use. Like the uh, 16 rig, which is a detective rig, it doesn't see a lot of of um it, it's got one driver it, it just does detective work it's not responding to calls um like a like a patrol rig so we could potentially see that car in the 180 to 200 thousand mile range without any issues but you take the 18 rig which is i think the um the number one frontline car which is responding and doing the hard turns and, and, fast and um, quick stops there's a lot of wear and tear on that truck so we're gonna we should think about recycling that down out of the frontline rig and into maybe a, a secondary rig at the 115 mark um like i said i just wanted to provide a a detailed assessment of the cars where they're currently at and what we might be seeing in the in the near future and and in doing so you know we're looking at, at the at the mile at the um the average mileage that these cars are being uh, that are being put on these cars um, in 2021, I mean uh, 2022, are potentially looking at one car with less than 100,000 miles on it. And I just wanted to make all of you aware of that, so that we could start thinking about. I know it's been a couple of years since we've gotten a new car, and I just wanted to be proactive with that information so that we could make some some good choices here in the next year or two. Okay. That sounds good. Tim, where do we find money for a car? Well, uh, two ways. Uh, one is through the detail fund, which doesn't have the uh, resources now to fund a car. And the second is through a combination of either uh, an article operating budget or detail fund all three combined so any one of the three or all three combined in the past we've actually uh, financed the vehicles through the detail fund which um uh if you recall i used to have a uh I used to have a uh, a plan a color-coded chart that showed you know the progression of the years and how things were being paid and it was fine when our when our detail uh, revenue was fairly stable, and and by that I mean you know plus or minus 10, 15 percent. But then uh, we got hit with a year where uh, we were about 30 percent of what it had been the year prior, uh, which which just really uh, drained the fund uh, during that year, making and just sort of making payments that year, and then. Uh, and then the very next year, it was the uh, you know uh, hand over fist. We were making money with detail. Money. So, so it's uh, the detail fund is very hard to project. Um, 
we have been successful in keeping the cost down to the public as much as possible. Uh, I sort of projected that depending upon how things look, uh, that probably in the uh, early fall, maybe late summer, early fall, we could order a car uh, for delivery either late that year or the beginning of uh, 22. Okay, are there any other questions about the cards? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Peter. I see we have six frontline cars, so uh, I think we've got more than enough. So uh, um, I don't know. This past uh, couple of years, I bought uh, an Acura 2003 with over 200,000. Um, the only problem I had was when I acted stupid. I have a 2003 Odyssey. I bought with 219,000. I've got $1,500 into it, put new brakes, haven't had a problem. Um, so it's interesting that, you know, at 115, 130,000, we put them to bed. It's like, apparently the American cars aren't, are made for crap or what? I wouldn't say that they're made for crap. They're just, they're, they were expected to perform in extreme situations that a normal person wouldn't put their vehicle through. I don't know how many high speed chases you have in Tilton. And as it is, there's not a whole lot of areas you can get a whole lot of high speed. It's one thing if you're a state trooper and you've got uh, Coas County you're covering and you're in Pittsburgh and you got a call in Berlin, you know, they've got uh, big things. We're a municipality. Um, I don't, see the thing, then maybe we should also be looking at electric vehicles. You've got a lot less parts to worry about. I, I would, electric vehicles require certain certifications. Sometimes they require dealership affiliation because of the electric portion of the vehicle. It opens up a whole new can of worms. Um, you want acceleration, you can't beat electric. Oh, I know. I've, I've ridden in a Tesla. I understand. <laughs> um, but, yeah, th those are a lot of good points that you make. And like I said, the, the 115 was a conservative number. Um, can I get 200, 300,000 out of these cars? Absolutely. Everybody knows that I'm in for longevity. I don't expect to buy another truck for 20 years. Um, it's just the... the the extra um, emphasis that I put on a police vehicle, um, and I'm just I'm under the mindset of it. It's just expected to be under extreme conditions. Um, so, so that's I why I come up with the 115 number. I have a oh. suggestion. Go ahead, Tim. Well, I was just going to say that uh, one of the things that uh, you know, until I had gone through Kevin's report with him and, and Jeannie, I wasn't aware of these issues because when you look at the budget, uh, we, we were about 60% spent on uh, maintenance for the cruisers. So, you know, by looking at the budget, it's it's um, misleading. And, you know, I mean, fortunately, not that would we had, you know, two transmissions go out or something really expensive. Um, you know, that could have swayed it very easily. but um so i i was unaware of where we are you know the question i guess is um you know a, a new fully outfitted cruiser is going to be in that 50 to 60 thousand dollar range uh, very easily um even taking over you know bringing over some things from our existing vehicles and from what i understood uh, in talking with the captain uh, about a year ago, the new uh, body explorer uh, doesn't permit the use of all the internal cage and that sort of thing from our existing uh, police interceptors. So, um, you know, so there's some things that we would have to buy new probably based on the body style. Um, but, you know, you'd have to expect to be in that 50 to 60 range. So, you know, some of that could be paid for out of the detail fund. It's possible uh you know maybe a, a 20 40 split you know something like that or 20 35 split uh where the warrant articles for 35 and with the balance to come from the detail fund when uh you know when it's built up to that 
Okay, so for a follow-up, if we have nine frontline cruisers, I uh, sorry, six frontline cruisers, and uh, nine uh, on patrol, is there a way of trying to assign officers to certain vehicles so that not in every one that'll reduce the different types of wear and tear, which may save a little bit? That would be for the chief, I guess. <laughs> A question for uh, the chief and Kevin. What about the uh, Chevy Tahoe versus the uh, Ford Exploders? Uh, talk to Northfield. I see they've got a uh, nice white Tahoe. Um, my opinion on that would be from a mechanic standpoint, the Ford is getting, the Ford platform is getting harder and harder for a mechanic because they're keeping more information a secret there um, where Chevy and Dodge are more uh, forthcoming with information for repairs um, for for an example the 2017 uh, 17 B that we have I can read the HVAC system with my diag computer now my diagnostic computer is completely updated to 2020 we have the 2018 Ford Explorer I can't read the ABS system. I cannot read the HVAC system. Um, and they're, they're making it so that you have to use the dealership to get these repairs done. Um, the Like I said, the Chevy and the Dodge platforms are more forthcoming with this information. So as for, for me, for, from a mechanic standpoint, I would entertain going with a different vehicle just for that reason so that we can continue to have our, our vehicles repaired in-house and not have to outsource. Do you have any idea, Kevin, the difference in price between the uh, Explorer versus the Tahoe? I do not. I, I haven't researched any of that. I would think the Tahoe might be a little better for longevity, a little bit more heavy duty. It's more of a truck casting. Is the, cause okay, I know hold on, hold on. I, I hate to interrupt. The time is now 6.02. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, and sorry. We need to... Uh, move into a non-public session. And I'm sorry to cut this conversation off. Um, we'll get back to it real soon, Kevin. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Um, okay. See ya. So, time being 6.02 p.m., I'd like to make a motion to move into non-public session per RSA 91-A, semicolon 3, paragraph 2C, matters which would likely adversely affect the reputation of any person other than a member of this board. We expect to be back into public session at approximately 7 p.m. Do I have a second? Constantino, second. I have a second. We have a motion and a second. Um, is there any discussion? Roll call vote. Constantino. Constantino, yes. Fog, yes. Eric? Pyro, yes. John? Scanlon, yes. <laughs> you don't sound sure, John. Um, I, yeah, I can't find the link to the uh, private. It's, agenda. Uh, okay, well, we'll work on that. And Jessamyn is a yes. The on the agenda, John. Um, the agenda email, John, from Janie. Okay, we're going to switch over to the non-public. We stand in non-public session. Tim, have we, are we canceled out here? This conference will there. now be recorded. And John and Peter. <laughs> John, you look much better than at six o'clock this morning or six thirty this morning. Uh, I looked over. <laughs> that was before my coffee. <laughs> That's Eric. <hurt. laughs> Peter. Yes. There we go. Okay, Tim, would you like to put us back in? You are recorded right as we speak. Okay, time is 
We're back in regular session. I make a motion to seal the minutes of the non-public session of January 7th, 2021, because the re reasons justifying the need for the non-public session still remain. Is there a second? Dog right, second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, uh, roll call vote. If, uh, Antonio, please yes. signify saying uh, aye. Yes. Aye, yes. Scanlon, aye. Jessamine yeah, is an aye as well. Uh, the minutes are sealed. Okay, we're on selectman reports. Uh, I'm first. Um, uh, just a message about municipal parking. Uh, the 2020 municipal parking stickers uh, are expired. And we'd like to remind people that now is the time to get your 2021 municipal parking stickers. Due to the COVID-19, you need to call the police department directly to make an appointment to get your sticker. For those listening, the direct line to the police department is 286-8207. Uh, January 20th through the 29th, filing for town positions, uh, elected positions becomes open. Our town clerk tax collector advised that she will have the declaration of candidacy. Oh my goodness. The declaration of candidacy application online and will be posting on Facebook. She is waiting to hear from the Secretary of State's office about in-person submissions. If you have any questions, please call, call the town clerk's office directly. What's the dates on that again, Joe? Uh, the dates on the on the filing are January 20th through the 29th. Thank you. Okay, I have more. All I have to do is find my paper. Too many papers here. Okay. Uh, Friday, January 8th, is the last day to vote to extend polling hours. Do you want to extend them this time around? Uh, typically, we open at 8 a.m., but we can open at 7. Do you want to keep that time the same, or do you want to change it? Um, this is a, the only thing on our, our voting, other than the uh, ordinance changes, is the town elections, and uh, there's no contentious things there. So I expect the turnout would be light. At least it has historically. What do you think, Pat? I'm also, I, I keep it the same. That's my vote. Peter? I would say consistency works best for the uh, taxpayers. Good enough, Eric. Um, I would prefer to keep it. I would actually like the seven o'clock hour. I think that with people that leave for work in the morning appreciate it because they don't always get back in time. John, um, I'm either way. Uh, I think maybe talk to the moderator and see what he thinks. And uh, the town clerk. Okay. Um, and I am a keep it at 8 a.m., um, which would mean we'd open at 8. But you're right, John. Uh, we should coordinate this uh, with the, the moderator. So uh, can we actually vote on this next week, Jeannie? Also, the town clerk, Joe, because it affects her yeah. in her office yeah. as well. Yes. Supervisors yeah. of the checklist. Um, yeah, well, the moderator's got a pipeline into those other people, but not the town clerk. Well, as long as they're made aware and not blindsided, that's all I'm asking. Yeah, no, no, it wouldn't be a surprise to anybody when it, it, it happens. I'll send an email to the clerk, the town clerk, the moderator, and the supervisor of the checklist. Um, and Perfect. ask them to weigh in, but ultimately it's up to the select board. Mm -hmm. um, 
Yep. All right. Okay. Um, also, I, I'd like to uh, bring up that we've received information about hosting a virtual town meeting this year due to COVID-19. There's a motion that passed the Senate today or yesterday um, with that deals with this very issue. Hasn't gone to the House yet. Um, and uh, the decision, according to the bill right now, uh, the decision would be left to the Board of Selectmen. Uh, ordinarily, it's the moderator's job, but this bill states uh, at this time, Board of Selectmen. Um, I reached out to Chuck today just to see what he was thinking, and he was the one that told me that. Um, I received an email with a copy of the, the uh, Senate bill. Um, uh, I don't know if did the rest of you get that or not. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, well, uh, the information, the information from the NMHA was sent out today. Um, and Jeannie is working with department heads to bring forward a plan for our consideration. And we should have something uh, that we can talk about uh, by the January 21st meeting. So, Mr. Okay. Chairman, just for yes. clarification, there are two issues in front of you. One is um, a house bill, and I don't have the number in front of me, has given uh, communities the option of doing a virtual town hall and it would require three meetings if you've read the information i had actually sent it to you once before on december 10th um that is one issue and um i'm on the list sir for the municipalities it appears everyone i've heard from so far is going to a virtual meeting the second issue which is the senate bill you're talking about i believe that has to do with actually delaying your town meeting so that if it would give you the opportunity if you didn't want to have town meeting in March that you have the opportunity to delay it so there are two different issues one is having okay, a virtual I, thought town all, I thought it was all one bill well maybe they've I haven't seen it so maybe they've combined it but there was a house bill last year that gave or, or yeah, I guess it was late last year that gave you the opportunity to do the virtual. And then there's the Senate bill that gives you the opportunity, the option to delay your town meeting for another okay, time. Okay, yeah. They're related, so, but they're certainly different. Yeah. So in any event, we, we will come back to you with, um, you know, a, a suggestion if you wanted to go virtual, how we would do that. Yep. Okay, um, we did. We agreed to discuss tonight uh, whether to maintain the status of keeping the town hall, Department of Public Works, and the police department buildings closed and open by appointment only. Um, and I would like to stay closed, keep the current uh, rules for all the town buildings uh, until February 1st and revisit the topic on January January 28th. Um, Pat? I totally agree. Is that a motion, Peter? Joe? No, not yet. Peter? Come back to me, Joe. I just lost the thought. Okay, Eric? Oh, I'm on the fence on this one. I'm, I really am. Okay, John. <clears throat> you know, I, I agree with you, Joe. Um, it's just a little bit too soon here, and uh, I don't want to make any uh, hasty decisions and have uh, employees <coughs> coming down with COVID. Choke gag. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Ironic, huh? Yeah. Yeah, really. Yeah, I'll stay Eric, home. you wanna climb you wanna climb off the fence or stay on the fence? 
Well, I guess I'd want to know for how long are we more are we going to close it? Um, Until February 1st, and we revisit it on January 28th. So right now we're closed through when? The 15th? Today. Oh, we're closed. No, through no. Today. The 11th. The 11th. The 11th. On Monday, on Monday, we're supposed to open back up. So another three weeks? Yep. Jeannie, has there been much issue? No, um, there wasn't. Well, I see Pat shaking her head, so I, I may be taking a different way. I, we, As far as I know, there have been no issues, no complaints from residents or customers about Town Hall being closed. So I don't know if Pat is saying, yes, she knows about complaints where people want it open. I haven't heard that. We continue to do business, and again, it's not it, it's closed, but by appointment only. So, if you if you need to come in, you know we still have the mass available and the uh, sanitizer. And has I'm looking at it from a standpoint of view. Has COVID hit close to home? Yes. So, oh, yes. right, I'm looking at it from that stand standpoint. And so, yes, without getting into further detail. Okay. Um, Joan. Yes, Peter. We say it's closed to, uh, except for appointments, except I think we need a clarifier. If you're doing a registration renewal, they're not doing appointments. You have to do it through the slaughter by mail. So I think we need to make the public aware of what parts you can make appointments, what parts you'll have to do alternatively, whether it's online or another method. I think that, isn't that on the website, Tim? Didn't she, didn't, yeah. That's That's been clarified, Peter. But if someone goes by this minutes and didn't check the website, by appointment only tells me any department, anything is by appointment. Not everyone's well, gonna cross reference, that's all. So, so I think I think really to to um, I think what Joe had said was that just to maintain the status of what we have now, which is I I understand, but a renewal is a conflict with what we're saying now, according to the town clerk. So I would just like it reflected in this motion. So if someone just happens to look at these minutes or this video and not the town website, they know if I have a renewal. Oh. I can't just go and make an appointment. They're going to tell me to drop it in the slot. That's all. I, I thought I saw at one point over the week, maybe it was just because of the new year, but the register portion of it was down. People trying to renew cars that it went down. Um, and that might be so. Is it down gonna, now? There was well, a period tax collection was uh, the kiosk was down from avatar for a period of time that may uh, a period of time is that hours days or weeks but tax collection only right I, i'm not sure it, i believe it was tax collection only and and it was uh, i want to say it was about a week Well, that's sad. Uh, that that was for all towns that utilized Avatar's kiosk. So it wasn't just us. So in that okay. case, would you waive? Would they waive any interest and penalties that that person may have received? No, I don't believe there was. But that's a state function, correct? No, that's an avatar function. Avatar doesn't charge late fees. No, but if it's on our taxes, it does not the state. Well, in that case, they could call and make an appointment and come in, right? And pay it. Right they can check. ask about 
they can question it. If there is a late fee. <laughs> oh, pardon me. Um, I make a motion to keep the town uh, offices, DPW, and police department closed to the general public, open by appointment only, and disseminate, put a notice on the front door or whatever we have to do, put it up in the town kiosk that uh, registrations are by uh, website only, internet only. Is there a second? Constantino, second. Is there any discussion, John? It isn't just by internet, correct? You can go and yes, well, of course. put a check of in course. the box. So the motion shouldn't say by internet only. Um, I'm not sure how to phrase it exactly, John. I think if you just said to keep status quo. Hmm. I think so. That doesn't take Peter's. That doesn't take Peter's. Uh, the motion will still pass. Right, just run it. Okay. Let me start again. I withdraw my motion. And I make a motion to keep the town offices, the Department of Public Works, and the police department closed to the general public until February 1st and to maintain the status quo. Is there a second? Constantino, second. We have a motion and a second on the floor. Is there any discussion? Hearing none. Should it say, okay. should it say well, town hall? Town mm -hmm. offices, yeah. No, everywhere. Whatever we're doing now, everything stays the same. Okay, well, the motion, motion is to close the town motion. offices. Most specifically said that highway garage and police department. I don't. I did not hear town offices. That was the first thing I said. Okay, I missed it. My apologies. Uh, no, no. Town offices, Department of Public Works, and the police department, uh, and to uh, keep the status quo. Um, and we have a motion in a second. Is there any other discussion on the most? Peter? Okay. I'm on. John? Sure, John. Yeah, I hate to throw a wrench in this one, but uh, what about the senior center? That would be the status quo, John. Right. Okay. They are, they're open just exactly the way they are now. Just outside Peter? meals. Um, I'm good. Okay. Roll call vote. Please signify by saying aye. Constantino. Constantino, yes. Fog present. Eric. Fiery, yes. Scanlon. Scanlon, yes. Jessamines, yes. The motion carries. Okay. Now, the last thing on my list. Where is it? Where is it? Um, I just wanted to say that, uh, here we go. Uh, the winter parking ban started November 15th and remains in effect until April 15th. No vehicles may be parked on town streets between the hours of 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. through April 15th. Uh, please be advised that uh, after 6 a.m., if you're parked on the street and you're blocking a, to uh, a plow truck, you're still in violation. You can't block the road. Uh, now, the next one on the list here is Selectman Pyra. I am going to defer my time in lieu of the time on the clock. 
very well. Thank you, Eric. Uh, Selectman Scanlon. Okay, so the Budget Committee met last night. Um, they approved the cap funding in full. Uh, they start going over the Selectman's budget. Everybody seemed pretty good with it. Tim's got a couple little tweaks he's got to add to it. And um, they'll uh, be going um, approving or which I expect or uh, that next week. Um, that's pretty much it. Okay, thank you, John. Uh, Pat Constantino. The one thing John forgot to say was that they asked the uh, budget committee did ask for them to send it back to the department heads and tweak it some more, right? Mm -hmm. Police department. Yeah, yeah they police, could. Oh, the police department. That's right. Just that's the right. police department. It was one one committee member. Yeah. One one committee member. Well, they all kind of agreed with her. Yeah. All right. I. Uh, I was uh, brought up last week about the pay time uh, pay time off and the person, our uh, staff members that work so diligently for us. I brought it up in public and I brought it up in public for a reason so that the people watching our uh, meetings know that we have some very dedicated staff that work tire tirelessly for us even during our vaca during vacations. Um, last meeting, uh, we had some emergency time that we needed to absorb a lot of their time with, and um, I made a statement that we should probably go back and either reimburse them or credit them the paid time off, and they so graciously said, no, thank you. Um, they're very dedicated employees, and they should be thanked in public for that. I just want the public to know what kind of employees work for us. So thank you to the uh, staff that's included in, in this. They know who they are. Thank you. And uh, and one other thing, um, I I just, this is a, uh, an FYI. I just, I don't even know what the answer to this is that um, Tilton School closed their ice rink because of COVID and we have our ice rink open and there's a lot of people that are using the ice rink. Yay for once that they're using it. Um, do we have a liability in that or no? I'm just, I, I'm hoping no. I'm hoping the answer is no because they're, they're, I'm very excited to drive by and see kids using it. But I'm don't, just, we don't. I don't, I don't you, know for sure. I don't know for sure, but I would I would expect no because I've asked this question before relative to exposure COVID uh, with Primex, but I will confirm that. But I don't think we have a liability. Well, then my answer to that is yay. Okay, keep on using it, kids. Thanks. That's it, Joe. Okay, Peter Fox. I'm good, Joe. Okay, we're moving right along, kids. Uh, Jeannie Forrester, would you like the floor? Yep, I just, uh, I, I sent you all my report. I didn't put myself on the agenda today, tonight because I knew it was gonna be a long meeting, but um, I did want to have you look at, I sent to you the latest warrant article on the conveyance of Tilton Island and was hoping you could look at that and approve that tonight. Um, if you're ready to, if not, we can wait till next week, but it's it's the language from the attorney and it basically just um, conveys the island to the responsibility to Tilton. It's article number 11. I make a motion that we approve article 11 to Second. the warrant in re recommended by the selectmen. Second. Is there any discussion? Peter? How did they come up with Atkinson Island if it uh, was uh, the Tilton family doing all this work? That's my only question. I, I know, but it is in the deed. It's very odd. And it's where I was born, Atkinson. That's why it's in there. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have. How about you, Eric? No, I was wondering about Atkinson as well, oh, whatever. Good job. John? 
So now when we decided to, um, to pursue this and to go this route, um, in the warrant article, we had a, a twin warrant article that had to run in Northfield too. And I believe there was wording that it has to be approved in Northfield. Do we have to have that too? Is it based on they approved too? Yes. And they have the same language, only it's the worded for them. Switch over. Okay. Nice. Um, is there anybody else? Um, then I would, uh, we have a motion and a second on the floor. Um, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Constantino. Constantino, yes. I guess. Tyra? Tyra, yes. Scanlon? Yes. Decimant is a yes. Um, Jeannie, the motion passes and the floor is still yours. And just one other thing I wanted to mention. Um, Kevin was able to find three um, signs about falling ice and snow. Uh, but we kind of like some direction. I think, Eric, you were the one who brought it up. Is there some place you want these signs to be posted outside front town hall? I, I just was looking at, at it from the gas station, and it looked like the snow and ice could fall from the roof on us. I think when we placed them before, that was on, on the outside of the ramp, on the railing, we attached it going so that people that would see it going up the ramp and then on, on the outside of the ramp on the flat pot. So when you're going up the ramp, you can see it. It would be on the inside of the ramp, I'm sorry, that you could see it facing you in the sign. So it would be attached to the railing. That's what we put them for. Would you be comfortable letting, um, Kevin, take a look where he thinks they best should go and put them up. Yes. Absolutely. Joe, I, think I, also, I also believe yeah. they had a third one on Main Street on a uh, barricade in front of uh, like Janie's window and the town clerk window. Oh, I believe you're right. But uh, let's let that's let uh, Kevin. Muted. Let's let Kevin check it out, and uh, we'll put him up where where the obvious problems are. Sounds good. Okay, uh, Jeannie, you got something else? Nope, that's it. Is there any other business to come before the selectmen this evening? Yes. Hearing none. The uh, Tim. Tim's yeah, got to stand up. I just I have one little thing is that. Um, uh, that pertaining to the budget, as John mentioned earlier, uh, so I've got a, based on the uh, occupancy date of the new PD, if you recall, the interest for our ban is paid out of the uh, short-term interest in the operating budget. I may have to recalibrate um, the interest that's in the budget uh, based on the date and what we're looking at. I might have to extend it a little bit more. But at the same time, it looks like we're going to have some savings from the premium holiday on workers' comp. So I don't think it's going to be a net increase. I think it'll be a net decrease. But uh, there'll be a slight change. But I've got to um, get with uh, Milestone and also um, look at the bank and what our interest expense is going to be through the end of the project. So I just wanted to bring it to your attention. Okay. John? Is there a projected date yet, or February 11th? My report. February 11th. When? February 11th. That the it would officially be opening. Did you get my report, John? Um, I didn't look at it all. Okay. I'm, I apologize. That's okay. That's okay. Um, that I I talked with Brian Garris today, and they're saying February 11th. And you know how do they? say that it's done and approved and everything's complete who makes that decision i think it's ultimately the owner and there's going to be sort of like a punch list that 
you know, you're going to go through a month or so after go through and see what things are missing or what's not working. And then they're going to have to come back and fix those things. At least that's the way I understand it works. Yeah. Th I, that's it. Okay. Um, if there's no other business to come before the board of selectmen tonight, um, I just want to remind the board that we'll be meeting with our attorney attorney after we adjourn this public meeting. So board members, please stay on the call. Um, motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second, Constantino. Second. We have a motion and a second on the floor. The motion is not debatable. Roll call vote. Constantino. Constantino, yes. I guess. Ira. Byron, yes. Scanlon, yes. Jessamine, yes. We stand adjourned. Please stay on the line.